There is something called the mucusless diet, right? Mucusless diet. Anybody heard the term before? Yeah. Yes. What does it mean? I don't know. I've heard it. What do you understand from 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 just by you know? Um. Not um. Yeah. That. What she said. Anybody else? Is it like do it for me? Amen. Ask it for me. What else? Anybody else? Hmm? Alkaline. Alkaline. What else? What else? Because it's that. What else? All right. So naturally, the body produces mucus. Naturally, it does that. But there are foods. There are foods that are highly mucoid forming. Right? Highly. And even though we have, you know, flesh and stuff, we have stuff, but there are a lot of things we use in the still mucoid form, and it's affecting us. It has effect, an effect on the whole body, right? So let us see the definition here. Medicine of net. Mucus is a normal. That's normal for you to have. This is what you need. So it's normal. Right? Slippery, stringy fluid substance produced by many lining tissues is the body. Right? It is essential for body function. Right? It is essential. So that when you eat whatever goes in, the body sees it as something coming in. So it produces mucus to allow the internals not to get damaged. Right? So it's a normal thing. Essential for body function acts as a protective and moisturizing layer to keep critical organs from drying out. You see that? So mucus also acts as a trap for irritants like dust. Right? You see something like your ears, you, you, you make air wax, right? Mm -hmm. Air wax is a good thing, yes? Yes. Yeah. Too much air wax is what? It's a problem. Bad, yeah. Too much of it is a problem. But it is there for a purpose, right? To trap dust or whatever is coming in. So this, this is the role that mucus plays in your internal, right? So it acts as a trap for just like dust, smoke, and bacteria. It contains antibodies and bacteria killing enzymes to help fight off infection. It's what it does, right? So the body produces a lot of mucus, about 1 to 1.5 liters per day. And we don't tend to notice mucus at all unless its production is increased or the quality of mucus has changed or may happen with different illnesses and conditions. You see it? Yes. So we have this in our body produces. So it contains, you see what it contains? Antibodies. Bacteria killing it. Right? So this book here, Sick and Tired. Sick and Tired. By Robert Young. This man, for helping, you know, helping people, he has gotten into trouble with the government many times. Giving advice on nutrition and stuff like that, and actually helping people, they, they bother Most him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They, they will do that, because he's using the right thing. He knows nutrition is a problem. Mm -hmm. People are sick, they don't know why, but he's pointing them to the food. So he says, the majority of foods consumed by Americans are? Tiny meat point the food consumed by what? Americans. Hi. So if you're eating standard American diet, that is a highly mucoid forming diet. Standard American. That's why it's called SAD, sad. You eat that diet, you eating, you living according to that diet, you'll be sad. Sad life. That's what it is, sad, SAD. Sad. You'll be sad because you'll always be sick. They contain toxins and break down in the digestive tract in a way that causes the intestines to produce what? Mucus, mucus to trap, to trap this, poison. this poison. And the worst offenders are what? Dairy, Dairy products. In, in particular, particular. Yeah. right? Animal protein. White flour. White flour. Mm -hmm. Processed foods. Mm -hmm. A major factor is junk, junk food, food and fast, fast food. food. This is what we see in America, yes? Mm -hmm. This is what we see around us. And that's why 
the, 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 the flower, the white flower, is refined so much, there's, not, that there's nothing really in it. It's not in really. So when you read that, that's, it gets like a glue. Mm -hmm. It becomes like a glue in your intestine. That's what it does. Mercy. It's like a glue. Now, you know whatever you eat is not supposed to stay inside, right? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to come out. Yes, it's supposed to come out. Mm -hmm. So this white flour, this pasta, all this you know, processed mm -hmm. stuff, this is what he's doing inside him. Mm -hmm. This is what he's doing inside him. Mom? He says, regular consumption by most North Americans of coffee, coffee and alcohol. alcoholic beverages and of low nutrient, low bulk. See, it? low nutrient, low bulk. Process indigestibles is a doomsday habit. A what? Doomsday habit. Doomsday habit right in, in, in your stomach and you don't know. Waiting for the doomsday to come in your stomach already. <laughs> Sorry to say. So, so over time it transforms a healthy large intestine into a death dealing pipe containing layers of encrusted fecal mucoid material and debris, thereby promoting the growth of yeast and fungus and other microforms. See that? So you see how we began with we began with the mind, mm. understanding. Mm. Now, if we know his food, where does food go? Food goes from our mouth to here. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand the effect that it has here. Yeah. So once it this mucus builds up, it creates that stagnation in your intestines. Mm. Right? And it says it, it transforms a healthy large intestine into a death dealing pipe. So that you know that's in being pipe, right? Mm -hmm. Being pipe. And if that being pipe is clogged, what happen? What do you think will happen? Yes. Yes. It, you basically dying slowly. It's um basically poison your auto or they call it auto intoxic auto intoxication. Right? Yeah, constipation. Right? Auto intoxication. Basically poisoning yourself without even knowing it. So you have layers upon layers. This thing is building layers upon layers upon layers in your intestines. Layers. So you might be 30, 40 years now. You might have stuff in you that you ate from a child. Mercy. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. That's what you know, Mercy, Lord. You may have stuff in you that from a child growing up because you never purged. You never really cleansed. So the problem we have is that we make the change from eating the wrong foods and then we start eating the right food but we never clean out the pipe. So you have that layer upon layer upon layer inside of you. Um, I think, can you say that's why a lot of people end up sick? Huh? A lot of people say, oh, I'm eating healthy, but I'm still I'm sick. I'm sick, yeah. Because, of the diet because they do Exactly. Oh, no, I was going to mention, <laughs> you, you touched on it, because a lot of people like to um, say, you know, like, like Renella said, they try this and they try that, and it's not working. It's because you can't just stop doing bad without... And you can't stop doing bad and go to doing good without cleansing yes. your system. Out. Remember, you look at the sin problem. Look at the sin problem. Mm -hmm. Christ came and died for the sin problem, right? Mm -hmm. For the penalty of our sin. So, do we automatically just go from. So, automatically he dies, so automatically we stop sinning? No. Is there a work of cleansing? It's a process. Is there a work of cleansing? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. You see? You see? That's right. <coughs> and then it's not um, old wine in new bottle. That's, that's right. <laughs> new wine. <laughs> new wine. I mean, new wine. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. New wine in old. So no sadly, that's the case, though. Sadly, that's the case mm -hmm. with the food. Mm -hmm. So we put in new food in what? Old, old, old system. Mm. Because you absorb nutrients for your intestines, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Yep. 
Yes, you absorb. When you eat the food and it's broken down and go through your intestine, your small intestine, what has been, it's been absorbed? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if your intestine is lined with this stuff from years upon years upon years, mm -hmm. and you're eating the good stuff, no how much are you actually getting? No effect. So, 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 so when we go, when we are called to the medical missionary work, yeah. and we folks who probably have changed the diet, yeah. but yet still they are getting sick. Yeah. So this way up. Right? Yeah. The first place you start with the mind, right. start with the mind, mm -hmm. and then you address this. Because this and this are connected. Kind of mm -hmm. Your gut is connected to your mind. That's why Satan is using food. Because once you could attack the gut, right? Once you could, you could attack the gut, you will not think properly. You see it? So he's accessing this through this. this and, way. and all sickness starts in the gut. Yeah. 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 So, layers of encrusted fecal mucoid material and debris, thereby promoting the growth of yeast and fungus and other mucoid. Uh, morbid uh, microforms. Vegetables are not mucoid forming, which is just one more reason to make them the major portion of your diet. Vegetables, fruits, grains, nuts, seeds. Right? And this is a diseased colon, right? So you have people with Irritable bowel, bowel syndrome and diverticulitis, mm. ulcerative colitis, colitis, right? Cancer, Crohn's disease, right? All of this is because of the stagnation in there. Stagnation in there. That's where all this thing is coming. And it's not only limited to these diseases. You know. When you start to look at disease, cancer, eczema, all name it, breast cancer, all di different diseases. You have to address the balance. You have to address the balance. Yes, my sister. A few, a few months ago, my problem was constipation and bloating. I always have to take something for me to go. Yeah. Yes, I would take the healthy stuff for yeah. me to have about the movement. Yeah. And um, sometimes two, three days. Yeah. I know about the movement. I say, oh, hey, can I no, I have to take something to go. Yeah. So I change my Better. I change my diet. Yeah. No, I don't have to take anything to go. It's just it's just going. So now well I, well, I did a cleanse and all of that, I did. Mm. So what I'm saying now, mm. after we have done the cleanse, now, let me back up a little. In order for us to make progress in anything, mm -hmm. it's not from no one telling us or ordering us. Amen. We have to make up our mind. Amen. If, if your mind is made up, mm -hmm. that this is what I'm going to do, yeah. then you do it. Yeah. And after you see results now, you don't go back. That's because right. you made up your mind that you're going to do it. That's right. You keep going forward. So That's now right. it becomes a lifestyle. That's right. Amen. That's right. Because disease, lifestyle, call it lifestyle diseases, yeah. right? Yeah. Lifestyle diseases. So it causes so, lifestyle, yes. lifestyle changes. Yes, you have. Yes. You have. So disease, when you, once you deal with it, I don't care what it is. Okay. Diabetes, high blood pressure, you know, whatever you're dealing with, cancer. You know, especially when you see this stuff, especially the you know, diverticulitis and this stuff, you know automatically that is the color. And it needs to be cleansed. Yeah. It needs to be cleansed. So if you're eating two, three meals a day, how many bowel movements are you supposed to be having per day? Three. Two, three. Yeah. 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 Anything less is considered constipation. So you well, I go all my life I was never like that. Huh? All my life I was never full of Once a day. Once a day. Ever since I was And how many meals you were eating? Three and four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't so listen to that. So you eating three, four meals per day. 
since I was a child. Since you was a child. And you're having one movement. So you backed up how many meals? Backed up. Three meals per day since you were small. So every time you eat, you should expel. Yes. It's not made to stay in there, my sister. So this is why eating between meals is bad. Right. Because so you're not giving your body time to expel what you already man. had. Amen. And then I also learned that when we eat between meals, if you eat something now, your body starts working on it since in your mouth. Digestion yes. starts. Yes. So when it goes there and it's being processed in the stomach and all of that good stuff, and you start eating something again, yes. it yes. stops what it's yes. doing. Yes. Yes. Start working on that, and then it starts getting fermented in there. Yes. So then Amen. That will work on your stomach. Yes. Amen. Oh, she says, says you want to come and finish no, the no, 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 no. I'll be quiet. You see it? You see it? You see, it? You see why it's bad to eat between meals? How many hours you must wait before after we eat a meal? How many hours should Five. Five. Yes. Five. So between between two to four hours, depending on what you eat, we, 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 we attend it. So between two to four hours, that will be digestion. And then you give it the stomach one extra hour. Right? So you don't rush. So once you disrupt, once you eat now and you eat between meals, you're disrupting the digestive pro uh, process, right? And, and, and you end up with a lot of problems. So all folks are sick, like Dion. I'm not sick, I'm not sick. Please let me, I'm not sick. I am just saying, Bergerick. I want to correct this thing ever since. Bridget, I am not S-I-C-K. I am well. The only thing I have problem is with my eyes. My eyes are not getting it's blurred. That's the only thing. I am not S-I-C-K. Thank you very much. I am not. So I put it that way. And another thing too, I am not blind. Because over and over you hear people saying, I touch and say you can't see. I am not blind. I am not sick, Bridget. Okay? Thank you very much. For the record, Bridget, please. Praise the Lord. Please, let not, let's not say, you know, say this one is sick. Let the person, let the person confirm. Go. Let the person confirm yeah, that he or she is sick. Okay. Yes, I take care of myself all week with the help of God. I go in and I come out. Yes. I go out, I mean, and, and think. So don't worry yes. about it. So no eating between meals, that's bad. Yes. yes. Okay, that is bad. No drinking. <laughs> No drinking with your food. No drinking. We there? We there? Eating and drinking at the same time is just as bad. Wow. Yes, it ferments the food. Yes. Because that's the way it works. And then it is always at eating and drinking at the same time. Because normally when you go to a restaurant, the first thing they put in your table is a bottle of water. A glass of water. A glass of water. Or they bring the the beverage first. And then you then your, your beverage. And you start to drink. And then you start to eat. Some people have steak or whatever, and they have their bottle of their, their glass of wine. One, two, so they're eating, two, and they're drinking, or the smoothie or whatever they have. Mm. And, it's how, and that's how and it it's goes. not good. But that is very bad. Mm. That is very bad. So when should you drink the, the liquid? Oh, when should you drink the liquid? Anybody know? Half an hour before, two hours after. Half an hour before? At least one hour. What if you're choking? I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. What if yeah, you're yeah, choking? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, or it's so, very dry. Whatever you yes, eat, yes. it can be very dry. Good. And dry yes, that's a very important point. So you you could, you could have a little a sip. Yes, okay. because you don't want to choke. You don't want to be like, oh, I'm not gonna eat and drink and sit and kill yourself. Don't be. <laughs> don't be extreme. Don't go. That's why I have to be careful what I say. Because people are going to say, oh, the past is the same. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? You can have a, a sip, food, but yes, chose. you have to, yes. you have to chew, the food. chew the food. Chew the food properly, time, properly, you properly. chew it properly. Right? Sister Radiant. I need to that in councils of food and diet. Yes, it's in there. I have yes, 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 of food and diet that it's a sin yeah. to eat and drink with your food. Because God gave us a saliva. Amen. And this saliva will, when you put the thing about it, will come Amen. to us. And that's going to start the food and break it up. Amen. That's what I read. Yes. yes, so this is what this does. This is what saliva does. The saliva. Yes. The saliva is there to begin the process of digestion. Yes. 
that's what it's there for. So once you take any liquid now and you drink, what it does? It, it dilutes it, 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 it destroys it. it. So the food goes partially digested, undigested. That's why you end up with a lot of different. That's why your stool now, the, the, the shape of your stool is very important. Mm -hmm. The shape, the smell, everything mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. Very important. The so smell, the everything. <laughs> we will see the shape as we as we go. Sister Anna, and then we we'll move on. So the question yeah. is asked: What are the set times that we eat in eight o'clock in the morning? What time should you eat again? Five hours after. Yeah, five hours after. At least five hours after. Yeah. Five hours. Five to six hours after. Yeah, five hours after. You see, because digestion is two to four hours, and you give it uh, another hour to rest, basically. So five hours after is safe to eat. Five hours after you eat. Okay, let's continue. The microbiome is ex ex inextricably linked to our immunity. With a growing body of research agreeing that 70% of the entire human immune system is found where? In the gut. So if I was Satan, where would I, where would I make problem for you? That's why appetite. That's why we need to get the victory over appetite. 70%. 70% of your immune system is in your gut. It is in your gut. Yes. We know we have lymph nodes and all this different things. We have bone marrow, all this stuff. 70% is in your gut. And Satan knows that. But you don't know that. And that's why it is mucus foods, you, 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 you know? Destroying yourself. So, yes. New study reveals that the gut uh, microorganisms of COVID-19 patients uh, were very different, lacking good bacteria. So what you eat affects the bacteria. You know you have good and bad bacteria in your gut. So if you eat in bad, the food will influence the growth of that bad bacteria. And it will overwhelm the good bacteria. This is what it is. Right? So they were lacking good bacteria than those in uninfected people and that the microbiome dis disruption lasted long after the virus was gone. This research is profound. And as more people digest, uh, that the microbiome is the very lab of the immune system, more people will make gut health a burning priority. Burning priority. Okay. So that's where fiber comes in. Fruits, vegetables, that's the simplest things we can do for them. Simplest, starting from the simplest. Fruits, vegetables, high fiber stuff. This is what we want, right? So try adding fiber-rich foods to your yes. diet as what? Fruits, greens, what? Nuts, Nuts vegetables. vegetables. Fiber helps to regulate, regulate your digestive tract, promote regular bowel, bowel, bowel movements, and support the good bacteria in your gut. This is what you have. You have soldiers in you already ready to fight, mm. but you need to you need to give them the support that they need. Mm -hmm. That's right. You need to arm them. So name some foods we can give them. Or you think that we can train for this. What type of foods? Fruit, kiwi. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, some plant food. It's right there. Apples. It's a blueberry. Fiber, flaxseed. Fiber. It's like a, a, a brush, a broom for your gut. Oh, quinoa. Oh, really? Flaxseed, chia seed, you know? Millet, quinoa. Your green leafy vegetables. Broccoli, cauliflower. Cabbage. What else? Collard greens. Carrots. You see it? You see it? You know, it's been so many years since I've actually gotten the fruit because of the way I eat. Yes. Like Just because of the way I eat, it had years, yeah. over five, six years since I've gotten the fruit. Oh, God, the fruit. 
Because you have to feed your soul. Yes. You have to feed your soul. Yes. Kush, kush is a brain, right? Just the way you eat alone is a big fact. Big, big, big fact. And you know, growing up as a child, I was a sickly child. Hmm. I was sick. I think I had bronchitis. I was born with a head cold and all that. I was always sick. So my mother had me like, uh, you know, sheltered kind of child. Because every little thing I, I would get. And I changed my diet completely to a plant-based diet in 2017. I don't know what the flu is. Is it squash you have up there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we coming. We coming to that. <coughs> because there are foods that we are partaking of now that we have to actually start to live off. Mm. Because of what they're doing. Mm. What they are doing to the food. Mm -hmm. Right? So feed your gut. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody asked about this stool, how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Right. So, this is your main pipe. So we see this one in type 1. Separate hard lumps. What does that mean? Severe constipation. If you poop in like this. Have mercy. Yeah. No, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we laugh. We laugh, but when we deal with that situation, we not laugh it. No, I We laugh. Yeah, it's fun, right? But when you want the toilet seat, when you want the toilet seat struggling, you're laughing at all. So, yeah, it should be like this. You really don't like it. That's severe constipation, right? That's severe. Type 2, lumpy and sausage like. Mild constipation. Right? Mild. mild. Type 3, a sausage shape with, with, with cracks in the surface. That is normal. See what it's supposed to be? Like Praise a sausage or like a snake. Hallelujah. That's how it's supposed to be. All I'm saying hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Type four. Like a smooth, soft sausage or a snake. That is normal. Hallelujah, See it? praise God. So that is normal. Thank you, Jesus. Now type five. Soft blobs with uh -huh. clear cut edges. You lack in five. Uh -huh. yes, Number six, mushy consistency with what? Ragged edges. Mild diarrhea. Mild diarrhea. Liquid consistency with no solid pieces. Severe diarrhea. So this two here, that's where you want to be. You see, and if you eat it properly, if you eat it properly, it will be like this. Trust me. If you if you eat it properly, it will be like this. You enough veg. You eating them veg, them greens. That's right. You have you should have no problem being like this. Somebody have your hands up over here. Oh, your sister Stacy. Me? Oh, um, I learned this too. I had a patient once that. She would go every day. It was never a problem for her to go. And then um, her stool was always, you know, um, I guess liquidy. And we took her down for, um, I think it was a swallow test she went to do, a barium test. And with it, it shows the entire, you know, structure of everything. And it came back and it showed that she was constipated. So, you know, we're wondering, how can you be constipated if you're having, if you're going every day? And then we learned that you can have seepage. So you can be impacted. Yeah. And the liquidy portion of your stool can seep around. Mm -hmm. 
and you can feel like, oh, well, I had a BM, but the red really, lump is still there. It's still there. That's why sometimes you go, but you feel like you like, uh it's like it's still so uneasy. Too. You still yeah. feel weird. It's because yeah. that it's the quality of it, not just yes. okay. It came out like a sausage, so I'm good. Yeah. Like Amen. everything goes into. Amen. One of the guests probably. Oh God. Yeah. So the smell. The smell also confirms whether you're eating healthy or not. Mm -hmm. Because if we are eating plant-based diet and it's still smelly, mm -hmm. you're eating something wrong. Something but sometimes you eat certain probably. foods and it would throw it off too. So. That's what I'm saying. If you're consistently eating good, you should have any issue with that smell. Once you eat something bad, you know you eat something. You, you probably you ate something that was that throw it off, that throw off. Trust me. You throw off, you eat something that throw off the smell and you know that. Right. No, but sometimes you eat Brussels sprouts or broccoli and yeah. it has an effect on the... No. It, yeah. Yes, it does. I'm talking about yes, that does. regular yeah. smell you have, like that normal smell, like... Okay. Before doing all these changes. That's what I'm talking about. You, sh you shouldn't change your diet and you still... You still have to take this spray and you're doing all this... Good for you. To kill the smell and all this thing. No. You shouldn't be like... You, yeah, you barely, you barely have a a a, a, a foul. Over. If you're doing it properly, you barely have a foul. Over. Trust me, you barely have a foul. Mm. <laughs> a lot of the vegan stuff we eat is, is processed. Yes. yes. A lot of the vegan stuff we eat is processed. Mm -hmm. So, you know. What did you say about number seven? Number seven, liquid uh, consistency with no solid pieces, severe diarrhea. Okay, because some food caused that. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Too yeah. Food. Too much fiber. Food is causing that. Yeah, you can't have too much. You, 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 we have to be temperate in all things. Too much fiber will cause it. Too much fiber will cause it to be more of a hard consistency. What about oil? Yeah. I think it's something that yeah, food, food can do that. Once in there, once in there, remember you dealing once it's coming out like this, that means you have inflammation in here. Mm. Inflammation is in here. You see it? Yeah, inflammation. You have some level of inflammation in there. And you need to deal with that inflammation. So as long as yes, you look yes, the consistency tells of not only the food you eat, but the condition of in there as a whole, you know. You have to yeah. take time to examine that thing when you put it up. Huh? <laughs> Not examine, but you, you can look. You, you look. Take a look. Have a look. It don't hurt. It's um. Uh, <laughs> 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 Not trying. Right <laughs> <laughs> Not You get. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask. A lot, a lot of men have a beer belly. Is that is that? Um, oh yes. This bare belly thing, you know what that bare belly is? This bare belly these men have? See this book? This man discovers thing, mucus's diet. That is, he says in this book that the average person is walking around with at least 20 pounds. At least 20 pounds of feces in his stomach. So each. The average person. It says the average person. Average person walking around like yes, twenty pounds. Twenty pounds. So this bare belly is what? It's probably somewhere else, Pastor. Pastor wants to know where is his twenty pounds. Huh? He don't have a. Pastor wants to know where is his twenty pounds because he doesn't have a belly. We there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So this is a good. This man was sick. This man used to be sick. Kidney disease and all sorts of different things dealing with doctor. He went to the doctor and. No hope. He went to plenty of doctors and no hope. And he discovered that not just diet, but a mucusless diet. Mucusless diet. Reverse disease. Mucusless diet. Really, really get you where you need to. Right? So, yes. So, this, this is normal, alright? So, if you have anything in there, like this, like this, you need to work. Basically, there's a level of inflammation in there. Now we need to sort out, right? Mm. Say it again. Yes. <coughs> yeah. If it's coming, if it's not coming out normal like this, basically you have some sort, some level of inflammation. 
the foundation. Oh, some, that. Yeah, that's why we have this stuff over here. So we're gonna finish this and we're gonna talk about some of the stuff we have here. Can I ask a question? Yeah. What about um, papaya? Mm -hmm. um, is papaya good for, for the gut? Um, yeah, papaya is very good for the gut. Yes, it, it, um, it has an enzyme called yes. papain. Yes, it's an enzyme have... you get um, papain, it's very good for your, um, for your digestion. And um, I want to say about the, on that smell too. Yeah. Um, whenever you eat, you, you're right, whenever you eat something, uh, you might be eating a plant-based um, diet, but then sometimes you, you, you snack on, on yeah. something yeah. strange, it affects you because I know, I know, yeah, I know for real. Yeah, sometimes I feel like eating a, a, <laughs> some chip and I go on and I eat something crazy. Yeah. It sends yeah, off. Yeah, you know your body. Yes, you know my body, body. Yeah, my Trust body me, starts your, reacting. Yeah, you know what what should, how it should be. Mm -hmm. It's a short video. As Sarah mentioned, I'm a surgeon. I uh, do a general and trauma surgery and I work in the ICU, but my PhD work is in nutrition. And so it's been an interesting run of 35 years now of bringing nutrition sort of back to a surgical practice. The concept of where I really work is a concept of getting people tuned up prior to esophagectomy or pancreatectomy or big operations. And uh, it's also allowed me to work uh, on, on several things. I do a lot of international work. We work uh, in Chiang Rai, Thailand, and then Laos, and uh, Vincent Laos on several big projects with rice and several things. So I've had a very, been very lucky in my career to be able to work on this concept of good nutrition, changing things, changing outcome, changing cognitive function. And both, and then come back to a clinical setting and work at the at medical college or at the Oregon Health Sciences, where I work in Portland. So, you know, if we look at our global health challenges, uh, they're really tremendous. I mean, really, but it revolves a lot about this concept of inflammatory disease. You know, we're looking here, and really, if we look at the diseases other than the communicable diseases, which we see overseas. We're looking at cardiovascular disease, cancer, chronic respiratory disease, et cetera. And those are big burdens. I mean, they're huge. You know, I think this quote by Napoleon very well, he says the winner of the war will be able to control, the winner of the battle will be able to control chaos. Well, really, our approach currently is chaos. We've got government that doesn't really regulate much, especially in the last few years. Uh, you know, they take away a lot of the things we get to get put in our foods. There's a lot of craziness. I mean, you know, for years we've been having policy that hasn't really fit with the nutritional aspects. I mean, we, we give billions of dollars to healthcare, but we don't really address what's the bottom line to the disease. We're not addressing the inflammatory process with our education. We know it works. If we start teaching kids at, at the five and six and seven year old, that'll, they'll take home that message. And it's worked and we've seen that work. And uh, that's a lot of what I'm doing now at the end of my career is trying to get these programs into schools so we can teach these kids and start from day one with, pro with progress. But again, you know, we look at inflammatory states, obesity, cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, et cetera, all starts. And if we look at the, this slide, it's very interesting. It talks just about, it shows nicely what's happened here. We, all the infectious diseases have tremendously dropped. Okay, this is clearly not just 50 years ago, but this is starting in about 1950 to 2000, of TB, hepatitis, rheumatic fever, measles, mumps, all coming down because of immunizations and a public policy which affects those. But look at our inflammatory diseases going up, almost paralleling, in fact, about 10 years preceding what we recognize as our obesity crisis. So I think inflammation then is the root to many of these things. And as you know, this is not new, John Hunter, a famous uh, biologist and atomist from London in 1794, showed us that inflammation has many diseases, associated with many diseases. So, I mean, it's a couple hundred years old. We've realized the connection. So I think that's the issue. So if we look at diseases associated with inflammation, it's tremendous. So, you know, you can see this big issue is virtually everything we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis in a clinical setting 
is inflammatory disease. I mean, you know, even as a surgeon, we don't deal much with infectious disease anymore, except for necrotizing fasciitis, which rarely comes, comes in once or twice a week. And that's about it. But so what's the driving force? I mean, what, is it, what can we treat? I think we have to think about the GI tract as the main source. Okay, so if we think about, I like to think of the GI tract as sort of like just a, a, a tube going through us. You know, kind of like a river going down through us, right? But not only that, like the skin that has to protect us from the outside environment, you know, from the toxins we see and the things we put on our skin, but it also has to selectively absorb nutrients. So it has a bigger problem. It has to absorb some things without taking in the toxins. So it has to keep out the bad stuff and take in the good stuff. And so there's enough endotoxin in just one person in this room to kill all of us. So that's how efficient our gut is. I mean, that one cell layer thick, you know, that we see down there on the brush border in the area out here, is basically keeping us from dying because the endotoxin in our GI tracts. And that's produced by the bacteria and produced by the, you know, purified E. coli endotoxins, et cetera, that we see every day. We use clinically to induce a hyperdynamic state. So I think, think about what the GI tract. So we're walking a thin line, you know? We're walking that tightrope basically between barrier function, symbiosis, and homeostasis, which is we like, to permeability and dysbiosis and inflammation. So I think that's why very little change, you know, in our microbiome and the bacteria can make that difference. So I like to think of the gut as orchestrating the inflammatory response. You know, because when you start reading and, you know, drilling down on this, it really is. I mean, if we think about that, we've got G protein receptors here that re respond to the metabolites and bacteria. We've got dendritic cells here that go out and sample the environment of what's going on and tell the immune system what to do. Basically comes back and regulates the T cell. The T cell that regulates the B cells. We know that these, these uh, basically the muscularis layer is altered by what's happening in the bowel. We see this every day in the clinical setting with once we've disrupted their bowel and done surgery, we know we alter the mechanical ability to pulp, to peristalsis. So really we have to think of the gut as changing. We also now know the association between the brain and the central nervous system. I mean, the gut-brain axis is a huge push now. And where did this all start? Well, it's actually fairly new. 1977 was this paper by Ben Eisman, University of Colorado, a surgeon who said, maybe the gut is the source of multiple organ failure. Before that, before 1970, we all said, it's just the beginning of my surgical training, we all said it's related basically to infection. And all these people dying, and those they were dying of infection. Then Ben started with the concept of maybe it's multiple organ failure related to this uncontrolled inflammatory response. Yeah, so they realized that they actually see uh, diseases that they are presented with, they're actually treating symptoms of a bigger problem. The bigger problem is the inflammation. All right? Inflammation. And that's why when we cleanse, we need a, like a total cleanse, liver, lungs, blood, skin, colon, kidneys, lymphatic system, right? Lymphatic system. Complete cleanse. And someone mentioned the alkaline acid mm -hmm. condition. So why is eating bad, right? Eating all the wrong foods. This is what it does. It affects the pH of the body, right? The acidity or the alkalinity of Go back on the, the body. Yes, so the pH scale is a pH scale. So what can we do? So sickness, acidic foods and drinks, emotional, physical stress and aging, alkaline, king and water, raw alkaline foods, emotional, physical strength and you. Right? So it says pH is a scale of acidity from 0 to 14, right? Mm -hmm. So it tells how as acidic or alkaline a substance is. So more acidic solutions have a Low. lower pH. So more alkaline solutions have a higher pH. Substances that aren't acidic or alkaline, that is neutral solutions, usually have a pH of 7.
So the, the, the actually the pH of the body is actually 7.35 around that range. So it's 14 is the highest in the alkaline. It's 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 seven neutral. Seven is yeah, seven is neutral. Seven is neutral. So what can we use? Yeah. yeah. So you have what is called metabolic acidosis. It's a condition in which there is too much acid in the body fluid. So, okay, diabetes, cancer, you know these things. You know automatically that the pH, yeah, the body is in an acid. It's more along the acid condition. Where it was neutral. Feeding it now all the wrong foods now brings it to the acid condition. Mm -hmm. So you have to bring the scale back, bring the body back to the scale of that neutral condition. Mm -hmm. Right? <coughs> the human body is built to naturally maintain a healthy balance of acidity and alkalinity. The lungs and the kidneys play a key role in the process. Which two organs? Lungs, lungs and kidneys. A normal blood pH level is what? 7.4, yeah, between 7.5 and 7.4 on a scale of 0 to 14. Where 0 is most acidic, 14 is most basic. This value can vary slightly in either direction. So if the lungs or kidneys are Mal malfunctioning, your blood's pH level can become imbalanced. The disruption in your acid-base balance can lead to medical conditions known as acidosis or alkalosis. So you can be too acid or too alkaline. Yes. So both conditions require treatment for uh, from a medical professional, and this is what they say, not simple dietary, but we know that is not the case, right? They're doing everything to push you to medication, right? It's what they do. So a blood pH imbalance can lead to two conditions, acidosis or alkalosis. Acidosis refers to having blood that is too acidic, or blood pH less than 7.35. So alkalosis refers to having blood that is too basic or blood pH of right. higher than, right. So this is what is causing us, it is some of the stuff which is causing us, if we, if we largely partake of these foods, then what blood pH do we expect to have? Acid, acid or alkaline? Acid, 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 yes. And that's where disease thrives, mm. in an acidic body, con in an acidic condition. So when you deal with something like cancer, yes the cancer is localized somewhere, if it's breast cancer, whatever it is, but it's a condition of the whole body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole body is in that condition, mm -hmm. even though it is localized wherever it is. Mm -hmm. But it's affecting the whole body. So you have to alkaline the whole body basically, right? So this is where we are. This stuff, the green stuff. And one of the best, one of the best Things we can use to deliver the acid condition is citrus, especially lemons or lime. Yes. And that's why we should be doing lemon this thing in the morning, right? Every morning. Yes. Lemons you do some lemons, so some more. Lemons are so expensive <laughs> and the limes, them. Exactly. Yeah, if you look at the little line that's too expensive there yeah, now, when you they don't have doctor, any seeds. When you go to the doctor now, how much are you charging you? They don't have any seeds. Like lemons. 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 We, you, we, we have to find lemons. either either you deal <laughs> Sister Jackson. <laughs> hey, either you spend five dollars for one yes. lemon. Or you spend five thousand when you go see the doctor. Which one you want? Which one you want? I go take the lemons. Five dollars. This is the kind of diet that we need. Fruits, vegetables are our largest portion. Boomerin, veteran. Boomerin. Fruits, vegetables. We need we have what legumes? No, we have nuts. Yeah. Some nuts. Yeah, that's a lot of nuts, but not so much nuts. We have legumes and greens, and we have some avocado and some oil and stuff, and you know, right? So this is where we need to be at. Yeah. Another issue is uh, the GMO, the GMO issue, right? Very important. Uh, we eating a lot of there are a lot of stuff that is GMO, you know, and we don't know if I take it. The same for pie, you gotta watch yeah. that. So yeah, so the 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 I look at this one the. Specifically, the Hawaiian one. This Hawaiian one was 
was was they make it GMO. So if you go into the sauna, you get this Hawaiian one. Uh, I'm not sure about the, those you get it from the, from the Caribbean though. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I know Mexico, they. Mexico it comes yeah. from. Hawaiian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Hawaiian. I know specifically the Hawaiian one is GMO. That's why it is there. So you need to research. We need to. This thing about just going and just buy food and just you know no, no, no. you have to start looking at and investigating what you buy and what you eat. And all these things have an effect. But you might think you're doing everything right, and next thing you're doing the wrong thing. Wow, look after it's there. Yeah. Yeah. So what they did I saw that the GMO some some not all some so that when you cut it it don't get brown as fast. Oxidized. You know everything is busy. Yeah, this oxidation process that comes that takes place when you cut it. Yeah, so that's why there are some varieties. It sh exactly, it should. It should. Mm -hmm. it should but turn. remember, man is trying to improve on what God has made. Mm -hmm. But the right? organic one is the same thing, it don't turn yes. around. So man is trying to make improvements to what God has put. And by, you know, modifying it. Yeah, so yeah zucchini is one of them. This, what about this one here? Corn. That's a big one. Yeah, that's a very big one. That's a big one right now. Very, very, very big one. Corn. Corn. Very. And you know the corn because you see those variegated looking corn. Mm -hmm. You know that's not real. Yeah. Yeah. Corn is heavy in most corn. Most corn. Yeah. Most of it. There's most no of that corn. For corn in most of that corn is modified. Mm. If you get it from Europe, well, maybe. Most of the corn. Now I know my elder, you love his corn. So I, I, I love corn. <laughs> I love corn. Be careful now. <laughs> I know you don't like corn, you know. But <laughs> I used to like corn. Yeah, so we have sweet beets, sugar beets, uh, squash, some squash, some squash, yes, some squash. Some potatoes. Some potatoes. Oil. <laughs> yeah. Soy. Soy. We eat a lot of soy stuff, right? Yes, sir. Most soy, I think, right? Maybe. Monsanto has the. Yeah, Monsanto is just corrupting everything. Right? So they play around, even, if, even with the cotton. Alfalfa too? Alfalfa, they play in yeah, some of it, so you have to check. So slowly and slowly, we have to stop. Where's the alfalfa? Things we. They have the horrible. Yeah, so they're playing around with a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. A lot, a lot of stuff. Oh, so you being this there, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot, lot of stuff. What's growing down on the farm? GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. Among the GMOs available in the U.S. right now, corn, soybeans, canola, sugar beets, cotton, alfalfa, potatoes, summer squash, apples, papaya, and pink pineapple. A farm-raised Atlantic salmon and pork from a type of pig have been approved for food use, but you may not see them in the market because they are not widely available. Most GMO crops are used in food for animals, but a few fresh fruits and vegetables are available in GMO varieties, including GMO apples that don't brown as fast when you slice them, and potatoes that don't bruise so easily. Summer squash. There's a GMO papaya and a pink pineapple, but these GMOs aren't widely available. Still, a lot of GMOs end up here, in your local grocery store, in packaged foods. GMO soy oil and protein are often used as ingredients in foods. There's even a GMO soybean specifically developed to make a healthier cooking oil. And GMO corn is often used to make cereal, crackers, and other snacks. Certain types of GMOs have a disclosure. That lets you know if the food or ingredients you are eating is a bioengineered food. Oh, and that sugar in your iced tea? There's a good chance it's from GMO sugar beets. So you see, GMOs are all around us. From farm to table, they're a big part of our food supply. Mr. Jackson, yes? How do you know the sugar beet? and the uh, GMO apple, how would you know because you're not cutting it? Because in the, in the, uh, the health food store, yeah. it is there. Yeah. The apples is there. So what do you do? How do you know which one to buy? Before you go buy food, first of all, you have to pray. Amen. First thing you do before you go buy, pray. Mm -hmm. 
Great. A uh, lot of deception out there. Yeah. And at least there are some, you see, you see these still stickers they put on the food? Yeah, these numbers. These numbers. These numbers. Yeah. yeah, these numbers have meaning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, they call it PLU, price lookup codes. Right? The GMO yeah, and right. So four digit codes are used for conventional world products. Five digit numbers starting with A9 are used for organically grown produce. Codes consisting of five digits starting with an eight are reserved for produce cultivated with GMOs. Right? However, these codes were never used in retail sales. Instead, they are re-attributed uh, re to allow a greater number of codes for use with conventional. So, yes, they are coded, but you will not always find the coded one to tell you, yes, that's true. You will not always find. So, pray before you go to buy. So that when you choose any food, the Holy Spirit will guide your hands. Right? The Holy Spirit will guide your hands as to what you're picking out. Right? The eyes of the Lord are everything. Yes, I think Sister Berlin had answered. You can go ahead. I'll, I'll ask maybe after you come to an end. Okay. Yeah, so this is uh, Yeah, so the same guy here, Professor uh, Arnold Errett, with this book, he says, Nature is the manifestation of the divine laws. Uh, there are no miracles in nature. Right? Now, what does he say, no miracles in nature? <laughs> See, if, you, eat wrong, if wrong. you have been eating wrong for how many years? 30, 30 40, 50. 40, 50 years, thereby producing <laughs> whose disease? Your whose disease? disease? Your, Yours, your disease. You must do the necessary compensation as reparation for your sins. For your sins. <laughs> you suffering, that's reparations for you destroying the temple of God. Sorry to say. So you must do the opposite by eating by eating clean, right? So natural divine food which will produce health instead of mm -hmm. disease. That is as clear as sunlight and as logical as two times two is four. Yes, you make changes, but you're still sick. That is reparations for what you have done. Nature will not work on magic now. Oh, say well, oh, you know, I'm, I'm eating healthy now, so let me be 100% healthy. No, no, you have done damage 30, 40. Imagine you, you about 60, 60 years now, you're just learning this stuff. How much damage you have been doing? Your whole life, your whole life. Of course, so the only hope of better things is in the education of the people in right, right principles. principles. That's right. Let physicians teach the people that restorative power is not in drugs. Not in drugs. But in what? Nature. nature. Disease is an effort of nature, nature. to free the system from conditions that result from a what? Violation, Violation of, of the laws, laws of health. So in case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. Ascertain. Unhealthful conditions okay. should be changed. Wrong Our habits corrected. corrected. Then nature, nature is to, to be assisted in an effort to expel impurities and to re-establish right conditions in the system. Our own Adventist leaders need to hear and Nature will not work a miracle for understand that. 30, 40, 50 years is in bad? No, sir. No, sir.